Yo, what is going on, you box-shaped bidoofs? Today we're going to be playing some games with Zoro Box. Um, this is the list I used just recently to win a League Cup. Um, and it's actually very much inspired by Henry Brand's second place list from Sydney, uh, uh, Sydney Regionals, Sydney Australia Regionals. Um, that happened not too long ago. The only change I made is I cut the second Meowth for a second Seal because I felt the power of Dugong um, was a little bit better or the consistency uh the consistent uh, chain of like multiple dugongs uh one after the other was a lot better than having being able to set up multiple persian or persian in general more easily through the meowth um, so yeah i opted for a second seal over a second meowth and that's what i've been running it as um yeah so like i said want to leak up with this list very much inspired from henry's list only one card different um and i actually found the deck to be pretty solid um, overall, I was very skeptical of Zorak going into this meta. Um, I still don't think Zorak is like by far the BDIF or anything, but um, now that the meta has been a little bit more figured out, you can kind of you can kind of get a better feel for what you want in your Zorak deck to be able to counter stuff, which I think is what um, Zorak needs a lot of the time. You kind of have to know what the meta is a little bit, so that way you know what you want to play in your deck. Um, stuff like Zorak and stuff is definitely going to be. Um, no good for a while, I don't think, but like the water builds with all the fire stuff running around and with how good Dugong is against like the Zapdos decks, um, I think Zoro, uh, Zoro box built something like this is going to be what uh, Zork's going to be looking like um, for the future. Now, we are going to be playing some games with this list today. Um, I will mention the one card I'm kind of unsure of in this list or the line is, is the Persian line. Um, I did get a decent amount of use out of it at my cup, but if it had it been just cut for, you know, like second Dugong, maybe even third seal. Um, I felt like that would have been pretty useful as well. So I'm not convinced the Persian is necessary in the deck, uh, but I'm gonna be keeping it in here for now. Nonetheless, um, yeah. So let's go ahead and get into some games and uh, we'll see how it runs. We're going first here in this first game. Unfortunately, we are opening up with the Tapu Lele, but at least we're going first. Um, so just gonna go ahead and take that trade off. Yeah. I guess I'd, even if I have to open up the Lele, going first is definitely worth it. Um, we can see our opponent has Anihilago in their active. Um, so Ace Arula is really good in this matchup. We definitely want to put the Zerua down. I think we will Ultra Ball away Lily plus Ultra Ball holding on to the communication. Going to go ahead and go ahead and get ourselves Ditto here. Muck and Grimer are in the deck. And we are most likely playing against a Zap Beasts. So Ditto gives us the most flexibility, flexibility early on. We definitely want to find the Grimer and a Seal, which we found both. Um, so we got Grimer, we got Seal, and I think we're just going to pass over to our opponent from here. Yep, so we got the whole squad out here very early on here. We got Grimer, Seal, Ditto, and Zerua. Um, but then there's a Grimer of our opponents, so maybe setting up Muck is not what we're looking to do in this matchup. You see the Nihilago, and I immediately assume uh, we're playing against Zap Beasts. But then they go ahead and throw on this Grimer, and now I have no idea what the heck is going on. And there's a spell tag as well. Now I'm completely confused. They still have the Jirachi in here, so they're still running off the Jirachi engine. Turn one Lily to back that up as well. Um, but yeah, now I'm completely confused as to actually what the heck is going on. Um, I guess we'll find out here shortly. Because um, yeah, now I, now I just have no idea what's going on. Hopefully we top deck a Pokemon. It was kind of unfortunate not to see another Pokemon off that Lily to be able to utilize these communications. We kind of just drew into all the... the Basics we wanted to throw down. There's a let loose. I actually don't mind this too much. I didn't really want to have to go get the Dedene and use the Dedene out of this hand. I want to keep the Field Blower. I want to keep the Ace Arola for later. So, that's fine with me. All right, there we go. There's a Lily uh, Choice Band and uh, Brooklet Hill. So, it looks like it's probably a Muck Muck GX deck um, with the Nihilagos for poison damage as well. So, we probably do want to set up our Muck in this game, actually. Um, there we go. There's a Dugong. That'll be pretty good. Uh, gonna throw out the Brooklyn Hill. Not gonna activate it, I don't think. Gonna go ahead and throw a Choice Band here on the Zork. We definitely don't want to bench another Water Pokemon. We will go ahead and take a look through the deck, I guess. So Dedene is prized. Uh, we do have three Zorks in here. We're looking for Zork on Ditto, Zork on Zerua, and then Muck on the Grimer, obviously. A um, lot of energy in the deck as well. All right, so yeah, we're not gonna take anything. I'd rather bench another Zerua if possible. One's Lily for five. Looking for a Zork. Okay, we did find a Zork here. We're gonna get rid of this Seal. Get ourselves a Zork. Gonna go ahead and uh, put it on the Ditto here before we go ahead and put Muck in play as well to shut that those annoying uh, abilities off. Uh, trade away the Choice Band. I think want to keep the Stretcher. Want to keep the Roll. I want to keep the Muck. There's a triple acceleration energy, but we have no way to utilize that currently. Uh, so it is just gonna be evolved to Muck and pass over to our opponent. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't like a super explosive turn one to turn two, but uh, we didn't really need to for the current situation, I don't think. I think we're gonna be looking at Ace Rolla, Tabu Lele, and then do some uh, uh, dual blizzarding on probably the Grimer and a Nihilago. We'll see, we could hit up the Jirachi and the Marsh Shadow and then look to clean up those later with Mew, actually. Um, so I wouldn't mind that being our play. Um, I don't actually know how much HP the Muck and Muck GX tag team has, so hopefully they evolve that this turn and then let us know, because um, I'm actually curious as to how much HP this thing has and actually what it does. I'm not actually 100% sure as to what this Pokemon does, um, so hopefully they'll bring it out this turn. And uh, all right, this is not what I expected. I was expecting Muck Muck GX, but it is the other new Muck, which I have no idea what it does. Um, it is not removed when your opponent Pokemon evolves or de-evolves, your opponent's actually point. You put two damage cards instead of one on that Pokemon between turns. Alright, so that's a little annoying to have to deal with, but we can get there nonetheless. Um, there's another seal, so he's pretty cool. Um, definitely gonna ace a roll of this, so I almost want to ace a roll it and then trade it away, actually. That way I could bench the Slowpoke if I wanted to. Um, the thing is, what are we attacking with this turn is really the big question here. Um, I think we are gonna look for the dual blizzard on the Jirachi and the Mars Shadow. I think that's gonna be the game plan here. Um, yeah, so I kind of kind of want to trade away the Lele. I'm just go with the dual blizzard with the Dugong. Set up these guys to be cleaned up with the uh, uh, what's it called at some point. Um, and then we can go ahead and trade away the Lele because the Lele is kind of the worst card in the hand. The Slowpoke's a little bit better, so if we're gonna use the Ace Roll, no matter what, we may as well do it like this. Uh, second Seal can come come down, and so can the Zerua. And then let's go ahead and dual blizzard. Uh, I'm just gonna hit up these two guys for you to clean up later on at some point. There we go. Um, yep, let's hit those guys. If we can eventually get the Mew, if we can like hit the Muck eventually as well, we can for 120 with a Zorark. <clears throat> then we can also KO that with Mew, so that's like three prizes for Mew to clean up later on eventually as well. So if we can get like another dual Blizzard off on like both the Nihilagos, and then another dual Blizzard to KO both Nihilagos, and then, I don't know, we'll just kind of have to work from there. Our opponent's going to be taking it really slow, too. There are a lot about the special conditions, so we're going to have to work our way through this, which gives us some time. Our hand is not that great. We only have one Zorark out, which kind of stinks. Um, so we'll eventually draw into more stuff, though. Go ahead and get rid of some more Shadow. With the Muck online, I don't think we're ever going to be able to utilize that. Everything else is a little bit better. I don't really want to lose energy to Confusion, um, so I think we are just going to pass this turn, um, which does kind of stink. Um, but I don't really see a way around this one. Besides that, so I think it is going to... We could attach to the Zork, which I'm kind of okay with, actually. Get that guy ready to go, just in case the Dugong does go down. I don't know how it would go down, but it's possible. Let's go ahead and attach the Zork, and then pass over to our opponent. Dugong will take that uh, extra poison damage, unfortunately. Yep. Yeah, I don't really want to lose... Uh, potentially lose a triple acceleration energy just to... Uh, what's it called? They are going with the Guzma on our Muck. Okay, that's annoying. I don't want to lose Muck. Um, actually, does he just get one shot? Not quite, right? I'll go up to 100 here. So we'll die going back into our opponent's turn, which is actually super annoying. Kind of perfect math there for our opponent. So we definitely want to find a Guzma here to get out of the situation. We have a communication to get rid of the Slowpoke to get another Zork. So we have a couple trades. There we go. There is that Guzma I was talking about. So that's pretty cool for us. Go ahead and grab another Zork here. Uh, evolve this one. We'll trade away that communication because there's nothing else really worth trading away. I would have liked to have keep the communication so we could look for a third Zork. Um, but I think that really is the best thing to get rid of. Second Guzma on top of that one is also pretty good. Um, so yeah, let's go with Guzma up. Could knock that out. Could knock this out with Zork. I think we're just going to knock this thing out with Zork here. Could do another dual Blizzard and set up both those. Now let's just go ahead and take a knockout with Zork here on the Let's get rid of the Swiper, actually, uh, just because it is possible our opponent uh, does KO our Muck next turn, and then we really don't want a bunch of Swipers in play doing extra poison damage. Uh, we will try and get the Muck back in play. We have the Stretcher. We can Stretcher the Muck line back in the deck, um, and then Nest Ball for the Grimer on our next turn. If they do have the Guzma to uh, knock out the Muck, if they do have that, good for them. We'll work through it uh, from there. There's another Grimer for our opponent. All right, got to deal with that guy. So we have five prizes left. Just kind of have to come up with a way. We might go ahead and swing through this confusion on this turn, especially if we get the uh, Field Blower here. We do play two Field Blowers, so if we get a Field Blower, I think we will just go ahead and try and push through the confusion on this turn. Here we go, taking the poison damage. We are confused as well. 
Yeah, I think we'll just try and push through it on this turn. Go ahead and trade away this nest ball, and then follow up with trade away, trade away the Dene probably. Yeah, trade away Dene. Uh, we could pal pad here, brace a roll of Guzma. I think those will would be what we pal pad pretty much no matter what, no matter what the scenario, no matter how the game develops. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Potentially drawn to those soon, uh, better than later. Yep, yeah, there is the field blower. I'm gonna get rid of these spell tags. And then we're just gonna go ahead and swing through this confusion. Not really too much risk involved. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw another DCE down on this other Zork as well, actually. Heads, Ooh, nice. Cut through that confusion, take a knockout here. Go down to four prizes. Um, and like I said, we have these guys set up to be KO'd through Mew pretty much at any point. We just need to kind of choose to do it. And then uh, that'll do it. <laughs> then we'll be able to take those knockouts pretty much for free with a Mew. If our opponent ever clears up a board spot on our side, they got they kind of have to help us out there actually a little bit and knock something out on our side so we can actually get room to put Mew on the bench. I mean, we could go with an Ace Arola play eventually and get the Mew on the bench that way. So that would also be fine. We will uh, we'll just see how our opponent actually ends up playing it out the next couple turns. Um, they definitely have a very interesting poison deck going on here. Um, I don't think it's gonna be quite enough to beat Zork. They probably have a decent matchup against some other stuff, but I have a feeling Zork is a pretty tough matchup. There we go. There's a Guzma on our Muck on the bench, and they are they are gonna knock that out. And I think I am just gonna go ahead and leave the leave the um, leave the bench space open or get the Mew and put the Mew down there. I think that's what I want to do here. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and just start trading. I'd be fine with trading into the Mew here. Um, so that way I have enough stuff for trade fodder as the game kind of develops. Can still get the Mew. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and Kikui first because that is how we're gonna be taking this knockout here. I'm gonna trade again. Like I said, I, we're kind of running out of cards for trade fodder. So I would be fine with trading into Mew so that way I could trade the Nest Ball actually instead on a later turn because our hand is like fine. All right. No such luck. Uh, go ahead, grab Mew then. Mew's cool. Boom, play the Kikui. So we got the Riot Speed and knockout here on this muck. Next turn, we're going to be looking for a DCE or uh, Ace Arola to pick this guy up. That's why we did send up the damage Zorak here because we want to be able to potentially Ace Arola this. And then maybe go into the Mew. We could also just go into the Dugong to clean up the Jirachi and the Marshadow. But I think I'd rather go knockout, knockout, and put 10 on one of the mucks. Probably this one. Whatever one has the most stuff on it. One ends up with an energy. They both end up with energies, and one ends up with energy spell tag. We'd go after that one, and so on. Um, so that's going to be our game plan. Find that Ace Arola, and then utilize that. We can pretty much deck ourselves out and then play Stretcher. So we don't have to be afraid of decking out here in this one. Could actually look to set up the Persian. Ooh, there's a Shrine. All right, didn't really think about that. Kind of just assume they maybe only play those. The Shrine is, definitely makes sense, though, in their deck. They do need extra damage to somehow get over these big GX Pokemon. And there we go, Stellar Wish for an Escape Board. Not going to be enough, I don't think, though. So yeah, we're looking for that, uh, what's it called, like I said, looking for that Ace Arola. If not, a DCE also works, we can just hard retreat the Zork. They don't have anything that stops us from retreating. Um, or if they do, it's not in play yet. Um, there is a Spell Tag, definitely gonna be looking to Field Blower Weight Spell Tag plus the Shrine on our turn. Don't want that Shrine to stick around for too long. And there is that Toxic uh, Secretion. Boom, boom, Shrine damage ticks up. All right, draw. There's the DC, so we at least have that. I'm gonna go ahead and trade away the Lily. Keep the Pokes, I think. We could trade away the Zerua. Yeah, definitely can trade away a Zerua now. I think we would go ahead and put down the Meowth for the potential of the, the Persian, give ourselves a little bit more options. Um, trade away that Zorark. Going down to two cards in our deck. All right, no luck on the, what's it called? The Ace Arola. Um, it's still in there. Go ahead, retreat to the Mew. I'm just going to go ahead and do some new things here on this turn. I'm going to go ahead and blower away these two. And then use that side power. We could have gone with the... Well, this also sets up the 10 damage on the active. So we can kill this active muck next turn with a Zorak. So this is probably this is the better way to go. Um, and you can do a ton of cool stuff alongside Dugong, actually, with this deck. Which uh, I was like a little bit like... It also it also really helps the uh, Picaram matchup. Shutting down the Tag Bolt from being able to snipe your bench is actually a huge deal. Um, sometimes you do want to set up Muck in that matchup, but I think having Mew out is a little bit more valuable than the Muck most of the time. So yeah, going with the Mew in that matchup is definitely the way to go, I think, against the Picaram. Yeah, I was unsure about the Mew's usefulness uh, in this deck. Uh, 
initially, uh, but the more I have played around with this deck, Mew is pretty good. It can set up a lot of damage alongside the Dugong's Dual Blizzard uh, in a lot of weird ways, uh, as we see here, just in this game, against like the Jirachis and stuff. Um, but then also has potential, a big potential against the Pika Rob matchup to stop them from being able to tag vault for that snipe damage. And they can never really chase it and knock it out because you do play the two uh, Rescue Stretcher. Um, so you can always pretty much keep it in play um, so the Picarom can never pull off a full tag ball. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this first game here. Let's go ahead and get into another one. Uh, interesting deck from our opponent. We'll see if we can't hit something a little bit more meta in the uh, the next one here. To another one here. Got the Ditto start. Kind of the worst. Um, I mean, out of like, I'd rather open Ditto than a support Pokemon, I guess. But out of Pokemon, I, so, uh, like starting Pokemon, I could open. I definitely don't want to open that. We're playing against a Weezing. Weezing is a super good matchup uh, for us, actually. Um, really gonna get to showcase uh, what this deck can do against the the Weezing deck here. It's gonna be fun. Um, so we do have the Mew, obviously, but we do have two stretchers as well. Um, so we're gonna get to keep the Mew and play a lot. We also have two Field Blower. Um, so we the way we play this is we pretty much never allow them to use a spell tag. Um, if we can't Field Blower the active spell tag, we attack with Dugong. Uh, Dugong's an amazing attacker in this matchup. There goes their Mew. Um, yeah, Dugong is an amazing attacker in this matchup because um, you can just like snipe around and KO two Weezings off the bench. Um, while they pretty much do nothing to your Dugong, they can't really KO it too aggressively. So, yeah, very good matchup. Um, and they usually, Weezing usually hits a turn or two of clunking out, and it's really hard for them to keep up with Zorark. Um, it's just really hard for them to knock out Zorarks. I guess that's really it. It's really hard for them to knock out Zorarks consistently. Um, so yeah, we'll get into this one, see where it goes. Ooh, Mr. Mime is going to be a little bit annoying. We might look to set up the Muck in this one, um, which can be a little bit risky because they can bring it up and trap it in the active. But uh, Ace of Roll is really good in this matchup, and then the Mew to shut down our Dugong would also be pretty annoying. So I think we will be looking to do that for sure. Um, so what do we want to go for here early on? Probably just a bunch of Zeruas. Uh, looks like Grimer. Oh, well, Grimer's here. So we could go. I don't know if I really want to go after or how important that is to actually go after I think we do want to set it up eventually, but we need to get Zorix out initially first. So that's what we're going to look to do uh, initially here. Get ourselves another Zerua, and then we'll go ahead and get that Lele for Lily as well. Yeah, so I think we will look to set up the Muck here in a bit. We're just going to initially go with Zorix, um, and then kind of look to just build from there. Um, yeah. See where the game goes and how it develops from there. Um, oh, I didn't check for Mew. All right, Mew's prize. That's a big deal. Uh-oh. So now we might be in trouble. No Mew um, is not good for us. Um, definitely not good for us. Definitely not good for us. So we got the Grimer. We have no Zorx in our hand. Um, I do want to put the Grimer down, I think. Yeah. I also want to put the Seal down. Yeah. And we definitely want to be able to bump a shrine with that. So pass to our opponent here. Um, could have gotten actually the Meowth out, so we could have used Persian next turn. That might have been the play to go for actually instead. Didn't overly think too much too hard about that one, but I think that would have been a decent play to go for actually. We could have, instead of benching the seal, we could have nest balled for a, what's it called? Um, yeah, this might get tough. Our opponent plays the uh, scoop up block, Mr. Mime, which is super annoying. We definitely want to utilize this role. We got, we got the Grimer out so we can get into the Muck. Uh, I guess we could have held off a little bit on the Grimer until we had to, gone through our deck a little bit more, so that way we'd have a higher chance of finding it. But I think this is fine to get it out like this. Um, it's not going to be super pressured too much early on here, I hope. Yeah, we might be in trouble, though. No Zorox in hand. Uh, no real way to find them. No solid draw support. We have the Kakui for two, so that's what we're going to be playing off of here. Here we go. The detention gas. Uh, racking up the damage on our bench. And yeah, we'll see. All right, that's not a great start. I'm trying to think about what I would even want to nest ball for. Could just grab another Zerua. I think that would be fine here. Um, oh, The problem with that, though, is then if we... We could get access to the Dene, and I think I'd rather Dene for the turn off of Kakui. So we shouldn't grab anything, I guess. Yeah, so I shouldn't have played the Nest Ball at all. I should have just held on to it. All right, Kakui it is. One, two. All right, Azorak. So we're chilling, we're chilling. We're doing all right now. I'm going to trade away this. Uh, definitely want to find another Zorak or a Field Blower. One of those two would be great. That's another Zorak. There we go. Get rid of those two. Keep drawing cards. Going to trade away the Brooklyn Hill here. Uh, we did Kakui, so we currently have the Knockout. 
on this Weezing. There's that Muck, Protect the Grimer. Also a super good uh, grab here. So we'll go ahead and evolve that. Shut down our opponent's Orangaroo. Shutting down the Mr. Mime, not as big of a deal. We'll see where they go with this spell tag damage. Definitely would have liked the Field Blower on top of all that as well, but can't get it all to work with what we got here. Looks like they're just beating up on both of our Zorks. Um, all right, that's fine. Yeah, so if Mew, if Mew wasn't prized, we probably wouldn't set up Muck and we would just forego the Acerola strategy. But because Mew is prized, we don't know when we're going to be able to find it. Um, I guess this means we also can't use what's it called, though, the Marsh Shadow to bump the Shrines of Punishment. But if we could just, just use Acerola once or twice, I think we'll be in a really good spot no matter what. So I think playing for that is a little bit better. Um, also, shutting off Oranguru is pretty good as well. So I think this is actually a fine way that the, the game has developed. There's a Lily from our opponent. They have the Larvitar on the bench, so we're going to have to deal with that guy soon. They might whiff a attack here, though. Nope, there's the DC coming in. They're down quite a few energy. Um, not everyone plays the... What's it called in their decks? The Shrine is really racking up here. All right. Okay, so that's a good top deck. Go ahead and attach here. Attach this here. Yeah, and then Lily for three... I think we definitely want to bench the Meowth here. Judge does not seem all that great. If we could get Meowth here, that'd be great. Uh, we definitely can get Meowth here. We have the Ultra Ball. It's just we don't want to like Ultra Ball away anything that looks too good. Um, this guy to protect this seems pretty good to me. Yeah. And then I can Ultra Ball. These two, yeah, and we can go get the Meowth. He's, oh, Meowth's not in here. Okay, so uh, I guess we're taking a Zorark then and benching the Zerua. All right, my bad on that. I didn't check for Meowth at all. Doesn't hurt us a whole ton. We're still fine. Riotus beating did not find a Fuel Blower once again. Uh, so Spell Tag gonna trigger. Uh, that really is one of the, the strength of this deck against the, the Weezing deck is we do play the Mew. Uh, two Stretchers and two... Um, Two field blowers, but when you prize the Mew and then you can't find your field blowers, we kind of are at a loss for answers to this matchup a little bit, uh, unfortunately. Um, I don't, I mean, we're not in a terrible spot yet, um, but I think it is starting to look a little bit rough. There is the Meowth, there he is. Only a little late. Damage is going to rack up again, so they can knock us out here with the Larvitar if they want to. Um, and then it'll start to get a little bit scary from there. They are going to opt to go with the Weezing. One more time. Here's where we definitely want to try and find an Acerola, remove some of this damage from play. Because um, what's it called is going to become a little bit scary here in just a bit. The uh, Tapu Lele with the damage swap is going to become scary here soon. Um, yeah, when we can't find any of our answers to reduce damage in play or uh, stop the spread damage with the Mew itself, uh, this matchup is a lot scarier than it normally is. We're still not out of it yet. Um, but I'm not liking our odds here actually anymore. I think we're in trouble for sure. There's Acerola, so that's a good start. Go ahead, start trading away some cards here. Got the Meowth as well. I think I might go ahead and pick up the Tapu Lele off the bench. Um, yeah, definitely want to Field Blower away this Shrine. Um, could go like this, and then we could actually just attack with the Dugong for the turn. We could Ace Arola, um, and then just dual Blizzard. Um, I could have even just not, even, I could have even just not benched the Meowth at all, actually. Could also pick this guy up. Oh, we could actually Ace Arola this, and then dual Blizzard knock out the Larvitar. I actually really like that. So let's pick this guy up. Send up this guy. I think this guy is just going to come back down then. Uh, I don't, I could have just not benched either of these. I think I shouldn't have benched the Meowth, and then we could have just, like, limited their damage that they can actually deal on their turn. Because we have a lot of triple triple energies left. Um, they have four prizes left. I'd really want to reduce the damage that they actually deal. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead, dual Blizzard. Um, give me the option. There we go. And we're just going to kill the Larvitar and then put 60 on this. And then we can just actually Tail Whip. He'll whap the active next turn if we want to. Yeah, we shouldn't have benched the Meowth. It's just going to rack up damage for, like, no reason. 
Uh, we could have reduced our Pokemon in play action by quite a bit here, um, which we should have just done. We should have just like not benched the Meowth, picked up this guy in the active still like we did, but now this Meowth is going to have plus 40 damage on it, which it just shouldn't have. Um, so that gives our opponent that much closer to being able to utilize the Tapu Lele um, to close out the game here at the end, the Tapu Lele with the damage swap. Um, so that's what we're scared of now is Tapu Lele damage swap. That's uh, our opponent's uh, going to be our opponent's way to win the game. All right, another shrine, another spell tag. Ugh, that's rough. We do have one field blower left, so that's what we're looking for off our, our trade on our next turn. There's the swing. Really racking the damage up on the Lele and the Zork. Also, uh, finding Palpat to get our Ace Arola back would be great. There's the field blower right off the top. Very nice. Uh, but they do have enough damage in play to just win the game on their next turn. So uh, we are a little bit in a little bit of a pickle. Um, gonna trade away the communication here. If we get a Guzma, we might actually Guzma. I don't think we could do that. I don't think we can afford to do that. Yeah, Prizing Mew is uh, quite the killer here. All right, so it's just gonna be. We did get this. The blower uh super important um what we can do actually is we can guzma up the orangaroo uh send up this guy treat and then we can go with the dual blizzard and we're gonna knock out the wheezing and the coco um which is pretty good for us actually wheezing coco Maybe I could have benched Azura this turn. Yeah, so this allows us... This this like, takes away their pivot option immediately. I mean, if they have an escape rope or a switch or something, they will still get there. There's the Mew a little late. Um, and I think it, because of the, the Mew being prized for so long, it will... Yeah, there's the switch. Um, so if they are able to find, like like I said, the Lele or something like that, we will just lose here in just a second. We just don't have enough stuff. There's a judge from our opponent. Yeah, maybe it would have been best if I just benched that Zerua there. Um, so we're looking for Palpad um, to get that Ace Arola back. There's a Guzma. We have another Triple Acceleration Energy. Um, so we're not in a terrible spot. Oh, There goes the Larvitar, but they would also need a way to knock out our Dugong. Which they don't have a ton of energy left. Ah, oh, well, that's just a Psychic. Uh, and benching the Larvitar actually just gives us the game with the Triple Acceleration Energy. We can knock out Active, knock out Larvitar. So a little bit of a mistake there from our opponent, I think, for sure. But I don't think they could afford to retreat the Coco either, because then they would once again get stuck. Um, and Muck shutting down the, what's it called, means they don't have a way to just draw more cards. And we are able to take a win there in the end. That psychic energy from our opponent on the Larvitar. Uh, not going to quite do it. All right, so we end up with another dub here. I didn't think we were going to win that one. We had a very rough start. Couldn't find the field blowers early. Only one Zorak out for a little while. The Mew prize was really the big killer. So we had to set up the Muck and they had the, the Mime as well. So pretty much everything went front wrong for us early early in the game. Um, but the matchup is definitely favorable. We were able to pull it back there in the end. And that's going to do it for the video on Zoro Box. That's what I've been calling it anyways. I think that's the best, the best name for it. I don't really want to call it Zoro, Dugong, Slow King, Muck. Persian, so Zoro Box is what I've been calling it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think of Zorok right now in the current meta. Be sure to subscribe if you're liking the content. Uh, links in the description for my Twitch live stream as well as social media. Check all that fun stuff out. Have a good day. Thanks for watching and peace.